Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ati Allah Ati Ya Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and abduk al ajeez al daif of miskeen wa zalim al jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And alhamdulillah that Allah gave us a life in which to see this blessed Ramadan inshaAllah to enter through its gates of rahmah inshaAllah, to enter through its gates of maghfirah inshaAllah and that Allah complete His ni'mat upon our souls and itkum min nar that save us from the fires of difficulty of akhirah most important and the fires of difficulty of dunya and that everything that uh, shaitan puts upon us of difficulties that Allah, Allah to rescue us and to grant us a nijad and that to surround us by sifat al-muntaqeem ya surkullahu nasran aziz that Allah grant a, a mighty support and that take away every type of difficulty and inspire us always towards goodness with this love of Sayyidina Muhammad is a, an ancient way of realities. That's why when we teach it and you're reading it in the knot, it's not something we've invented. This is the way of muhabbat and love. These are the realities of the turuq and there may be many people saying they're Sufi but the reality of the turuq is, is this muhabbat and love of Sayyidina Muhammad It's the 99.99% pure gold. Others may be silver, brass and copper if they're not reaching to that reality or teaching from that reality. So alhamdulillah when they teach it. You read it and recite it and say, oh this is the same. Sultan Bahu last night was talking about who, 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 who. And we've taught all this year this reality of the who of Allah is ancient reality where the people of the book and people of our cousins it was so holy they were not even allowed a permission to mention Allah's name. When Allah says in Qur'an that, I have to give permission for my name to be mentioned, then the peoples before Islam they knew the holy of the holy Yahweh and they knew this name, they know this name and they're not permitted to speak it. So. They understood this, so it's not something again people like, how is it possible? It is possible because the ni'mat of Islam, the blessing of Islam is Allah says, my name I have to allow you to say it. So Yahwa was a name that they had no permission to mention its reality, it was not for them. And by the arrival of the khatam and the seal of all creation and the beginning of all creation, the first of the lights that Allah created to make everything from that light and the khatam and the seal of all the perfection of the world of form, the arrival of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad is the immense gift when Allah said, this king will bring that word onto this earth. And the surah that has to do with ikhlas and sincerity, the surah that involves nothing of, of, uh, of laws, of, of uh, trade, of, of anything other than the Divinely Essence and the oceans of sincerity, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد And this immense reality of Surat al-Ikhlas that just reciting it three times gives the reciter the reward and ajr of the dress of Holy Qur'an has the… what we can't even imagine the weight of that but three times you recite and Allah dress you as if you recited the whole of Qur'an. And that's why if we can't recite the Qur'an and we can't do all of these hifs then Allah gave this secret to Prophet and Prophet taught to Sahabi kiram then recite Surat al-Ikhlas with the immensity of its secret and its reality 
and in it holds the secret of the key of Qulhu that Allah's Divinely speech speaking to who? And this was the day of Marifah which Prophet describes in that salawat that we recite, the day in which Allah called the reality who? Revealed to Prophet قُلْ who? And this conversation in the Divine, the presence of قُلْ one speaking, who one spoken to. So قُلْ who is Allah speaking but saying to who is the one whom is spoken to. That who of Allah will never be known, it's not by us, it's not our reality. That is a Divine Essence in which reflects to the essence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and is the reality of huwa. That reality of huwa is then the reality in which the, the perfected presence of Sayyidina Muhammad will dress his guides. He dresses them from the reality of who? He dresses them from the ocean of wadud because they have to enter from the wow to get to the hidayat and the hay. He will take them through all their levels of training until they are dressed with the immense oceans of love and rahmah and mercy. And that's why the importance of testing in our lives. If people want to know why, why, why I had difficulty, why I didn't just make it like this, why, why all these whys is because you cannot reach to love and real Divine love without being tested, without being crushed, without being brought down, without being continuously put through difficulty to see that where is your love for? Is your love for the money then all of a sudden life becomes restricted and you're gone. Is your love for the fame, they insult and humiliate and you're running away and you're gone. Allah's going to put through every level of testing. That what are you standing there for? You want to enter into my Divine the Presence. Many say that, oh I'm coming for tariqah but in their heart they're coming for something else. And in their life they're saying, I love the Divine but maybe they love something else. Only through testing and crushing and testing and crushing and then He guides. He guides whom He wants to guide, they have to be guided. He guides to the guides and they should be telling people, then learn how to contemplate. It will be your greatest weapon against shaitan and the greatest power to reach Rahman. Because you're not going to trust your ears, you're not going to trust your eyes, you're not going to trust your physical senses. Those are all under the command of shaitan. How can you trust your eyes when you watch television and it's none of it is real? One lying on one channel, the other one taking the same story and lying about its story. And his story is his story, everyone seems to have a different his story. So everything from the physical is a lie. You can't base your relationship on Allah with the physical, so Allah guides His servants. This is on how they are dressed from who? That He'll take them, crush them, test them, test them until Allah finds sincerity within him, in, in that person that this is from Ahlul Wadood, that their characters have been cleaned, their, their wildness has been taken down, their desire to, to be individuals has been brought down. Their desire to, to show and to shine has to be brought down, their desire to be nothing has to be raised. Don't look at the shaykh and say, oh your face is everywhere, what are you talking about? Look at the shaykh on how he was trained for 20 years nobody saw the face and he was the supporter and, and giving everything in the way of the tariqah. The one who took all the notes, the one who did whatever they could do, the one who was going in seclusion but you never saw them talk. That was not their training, they were hidden from people. 
Then when an order came by Prophet then now they go out and your face will be representing tariqah. But the training is where they're taking people. Mawlana Shaykh used to say, don't look at me eating baklava and think that your life now should go back and say, oh Shaykh loves baklava, let's all eat baklava. He said, I eat from the trash of the students. In London when they were finishing their Ramadan and throwing everything away, Shaykh Nazib was coming down at night and going through the trash and he felt very ashamed that there were things in the trash that the people were throwing at, he was eating those. And he said in his earlier life he would put himself through much difficulty. So don't look at the shaykh in the latter stage of life and he's already getting old and say, oh, I'm going to be like that. But listen to the talks on how to achieve that reality. How much they went through humiliation and, and difficulty, how much they were tested by the tariqah, by their shaykhs, by other shaykhs, how the shaykhs would publicly insult them and they had to keep their face straight and no sign of that. Because they understood the wisdom, if the shaykh, uh, if the shaykh glorifies the student, all oh, hasad will destroy that person. And if the shaykh, you know, attacks the student, then Allah will raise that student. Many, many different difficulties, why? Just to reach this ocean of wadud, that no matter how we squeeze you, you have to be loving. If we squeeze and something rotten is coming out, Allah will order more squeezing, that's not, that's not the character. If the, even the facial expressions begin to change, the movement, the behaviour, some people give, they get angry, they stop giving. Everything of their character is going to be tested because Allah is the one whom is testing and Allah is the one whom is grading that this servant is not wadood. This servant is not of a Divinely character and calibre of being granted this wow in which every direction they have to come out sweet and loving to the best of their ability. Like a ship that if you flip it, it always comes back. It still gets flipped because the dunya and its difficulty but it must find its way back to keep its course of of immense love, immense patience, immense amounts of tolerance. Then Allah is then training that student with the shaykhs that guide. When he wants to guide, he has to send them to guidance. That's why he said, there is no guidance unless Allah guides a servant. That if you're not being crushed and you're not being in a school that's going to give you a wow, your diploma after all your training, all your testing and all your difficulties, you're, you're feeling the wow and the Divine love is entering into your heart. You don't send emails that are bizarre, you don't send the utterances and, and crazy thoughts that are coming out of your mind like a mental institute, the shaykh does not like mentally difficult people. It's not a… if you, if you have mental issues you don't have the ability to reach to these realities. So it's not a place where people are emailing every day bizarre utterances from their head and strange thing, oh I'm like this, I'm like this, you know, like a coming out of your head. These are rijal in which nothing comes out of them. They were frightened to talk to their shaykh, they stayed quiet through all their testing, they, they kept the best of, of character. So means all these character issues have to be purified to be cleaned until Allah is graduating them with wow, is Divinely love and their, their nafs is raising, their soul is raising in this reality until they're being dressed by love, Allah dressing them, blessing them, granting from His Divinely names and attributes, granting from all of these realities, continuously dressing and blessing the souls. At the same time Allah enlisted them into schools of hidayat. So who are the people of who? They must be teaching the guidance of hidayat and guidance. What was the beginning of Qur'an? Alif Lam Mim ذلك الكتاب اللا الرَيْبَ فِي Hudan al-Muttaqeen, 
that they follow the kitab of Allah in which there is no crookedness in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad it's hudan al-muttaqeen, it's a guidance for the muttaqeen in which Allah opened their taqwa for all their senses. Their Ramadan of many years was for their mouth, for their ears, for their eyes, for their tongue, for their heart, for their hands, for their feet. That each Ramadan was to purify and to cleanse these different senses so that Allah make them muttaqeen in which they have a, a taqwa and a fear over all their senses. That Allah said, these senses of yours are not yours. They're my gifts to you to reach towards my Divinely Presence. If you reach towards my Divinely Presence, I will empower them so that you be the ears in which I hear, you'll be the eyes in which I see, you'll be the hands in which I touch, you'll be the feet in which I move through you, you'll be the breath in which I breathe and you'll be the tongue in which I speak. Means Allah will take over those faculties and when Allah take it over means you'll be inheriting from the Muhammadan haqqaiqs. That's what we described in Sana Kamil, it's not oh Miami Shaykh is a nice shaykh, I call him Kamil Shaykh, he's Kamil Shaykh. Kamil means he inherited from the Kamil Insan al-Kamil, the one whom has all the hearing of the Divinely Presence and the Prophet is giving from his faculty of hearing that he inherited from Allah into their darajats. You have small hearing, this one has big hearing, this one has immense hearing. That they're inheriting from the hearing, they're inheriting from the seeing. If they're not hearing and seeing then they're blind, they can't be guides. How could a blind be a guide? If they're not hearing their upper reality and the reality of the higher conscience and they're not seeing the reality, they just want to read from it is something different. But they have to have been given from these realities and so they inherit from the, the holy tongue, they're inheriting from the ears, the eyes, the hands and the feet in which they become the embodiment of the holy hadith that they become Rabbaniyoon. When they learned the book, they taught the book, the book of being Sayyidina Muhammad and so much so they have power of kun fayakun. What come to their heart is already the will of Allah the will of Sayyidina Muhammad By the time they make dua it's already the will of Allah and the will of Sayyidina Muhammad There's no third will. The will of Prophet is the will of Allah in complete submission. So it's only one from the ocean of tawheed, it's only the will of Allah These are all the, the haqqaiqs of that reality. There's no three people making decision where Allah wants something, then Prophet wants something different and then the ulul am wants something, a third thing different. There's no three, it's just but one. So all their training was to reach to that one. How are you going to follow the will of Allah if you can't follow the will of Sayyidina Muhammad How are you going to follow the will of Sayyidina Muhammad if you can't follow the will of these description of these ulul am whom their hearing and their sight is in that reality. They are the walking will of Sayyidina Muhammad to their levels of perfection. Because every insan makes mistakes, they are not masoom like prophets. They're mahfuz and guarded that when they've made their mistakes Allah will correct them, clean them and purify them. All of that is a ni'mat and an inheritance to be from the Ahlul Hu. So they are reflecting from that Hu, they're walking on this earth of the who of heaven and that's why we described it's such a powerful reality that shaitan knows that reality and he made the who of Jahannam. And the who of Jahannam represents Dajjal 
and he imitated the asa and the snake. The snake was a blessed creature in paradise. The snake was a beautific creature with walking hooves and beautiful adornments and beautiful lights. And when shaitan wanted to come against Adam and Eve salam, he called to the snake at the outermost boundary of paradise, said, I want to enter in to paradise, I've been barred from it. Lend me a way to enter into you and long story short the snake opened its mouth and shaitan entered in, made himself small and entered into the mouth. Means at that time the snake made itself a tool for shaitan and as a result the snake went back and caused fitna and deceit within paradise to bring down the reality of Sayyidina Adam salam. And as a result of what he did Allah cursed that creature, said, you're a cursed creature for allowing the one whom I threw out to enter into you. I take away all your beauty, I take away all your legs until you have to slither on the ground for your movement. So that's a cursed creature. So when you see that creature on the asa of Sayyidina Musa salam. It's a sign from shaitan and how many generations on this earth have taken to the worshipping of a snake. All of these ancient societies, the image of a snake and moving snake and big snake creatures, all of that because that was the one thrown down onto this earth, cast down onto this earth. So the who is an immense reality. Who of the heavens inshaAllah Allah grant us to be from them, amongst them, with them, guided by them to be from the people of paradise mm. and to understand the other one and what their role upon this earth and the deceit in which they wish to bring upon the earth. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us and guide us inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.